And welcome back to Rouge Radio. It's Reed Duffy, and I'm pleased to be joined at this time by the Commissioner of the Lingerie Football League, Mr. Mitchell Mortaza. And, Mr. Commissioner, what a league you've uh, put together in a, in a short time for the Lingerie Football League. And, of course, the LFL is in an interesting marketplace. You've got college football, pro football, both the NFL and the CFL. High school football draws big, especially down in the States. But lingerie football, I, I want to take you back to where this whole idea started and how it came to be. Yeah, no, I appreciate you having us on air. Uh, you know, certainly we're uh, excited about getting into Canada finally. It's been in the works for nearly three years in terms of development and planning. And, uh, you know, the upcoming all-fantasy game, Saturday, July 30th in Hamilton, is certainly creating a good amount of buzz up there. It'll be the first opportunity for fans to uh, in Canada to see the product firsthand. Um, you know, the whole – Lingerie Football League concept comes from the hugely popular annual Super Bowl halftime show called the Lingerie Bowl. Um, some of the Canadian fans uh, that watch the Super Bowl would be familiar with it. You know, oh, yeah. it's become the second, you know, the second most watched television special here in the U.S. It draws seven-figure blue-chip advertisers, and you know, because of that success, we thought if we're getting, getting this kind of an audience and this type of ad revenue with a one-off TV special. Well, what could we accomplish if we build more of a year-round league, similar to the NFL, and and develop these teams that fans would follow all the way through our annual lingerie bowl? And you know, we did that in '09, and and despite, as you know, the bottom collapse from the economy here in the U.S., um, it did really well. We drew second in primetime TV ratings. We drew about 30% higher than projected attendance, including near-capacity crowds. You know, so it, it was a huge hit right out of the gate, and we've continued to build on it. We've added on five expansion markets just this off season, and obviously you folks know about our plans in Canada next year. Absolutely, and of course those plans in Canada have started with the Toronto Triumph expansion franchise. It'll play out of the Rico Coliseum, and for those unfamiliar with the Rico Coliseum, same place that the Toronto Marlies have called their home of the American Hockey League for the last few years now. And uh, Toronto is, is a great place to start in Canada, obviously our, our biggest media market, but the, the media is where I wanted to sort of turn it to you uh, on a question about uh, how have you guys managed to get the TV deals and, and uh, the advertising deals for the Lingerie Football League? Because as you know, it, it's got to be a little bit tough for a product that's a little bit more racy than most. At times, it must have been a bit of a challenge to get the right uh, contracts in place. Oh, absolutely, and it still very much so is. You know, a, a lot of the business world and media world are just now finding out that, hey, this is real football. Most folks, as you know, when they hear the term lingerie football, and I'd, I'd be one of those people if I didn't know about it, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd certainly have my uh, uh, perception of what it would be, but you really don't get a sense for it till you watch it on TV or you get an opportunity to see it in person at one of the arenas and stadiums, and you know, I can guarantee you 100% of those people that actually watch a game or go to a game walk away feeling, wow, first I was entertained because I did not expect that. And then, two, these girls really take the game seriously and they play it at a high level. And, you know, as we tell all, all of our athletes, don't be concerned with the headlines today. You know, you're telling your story one play at a time, one game at a time. And, and the time will come where this will be looked at as a very legitimate sport that has a huge fan base and uh, it's to be taken seriously. So so we'll get there. And, I mean, you just look at the number of major markets the Laundry Football League has made it into already. Minnesota, Green Bay, Las Vegas, Chicago, Philadelphia, Orlando, Baltimore. And, and these are all cities that either in their respective cities themselves or near their cities, NFL teams have thrived. So, obviously, you guys must have done a, a lot of market research to pick the best possible areas to start the LFL. Yeah, no, it's it's not. Uh, those decisions aren't made lightly. You know, uh, fortunately, we we have a ton of interest from expansion markets, both domestic and abroad. You know, with ownership and buildings lined up, it's just. But still, you don't want to just start popping up franchises everywhere because that's not really effective. You'll you know spread yourself thin, and who knows who you're handing your brand off to. So we're very very selective in the markets we go into, the partnerships we take on. You know, in the business world, including several major uh, sports ownership groups, understand that, hey, this is what started out maybe as a Super Bowl halftime spoof has turned into a very legitimate business that's profitable 
and aggressively building. I mean, we're the fastest growing uh, sports league here in the U.S. as per uh, the business week. So, you know, it, the, the business side of it has been a huge success, and so has the football, and now we just need to kind of just tell our story to the public and to the business world. Now, as you move into Canada, obviously, as we said, Toronto, the first uh, franchise that, that will uh, create a base here for the LFL, where are the next markets that you're looking at in Canada? Is Hamilton a target? Is Vancouver a target? Different cities like that. And what has the reception been like for the LFL moving north of the border? 